Good morning. Welcome back to the One Celtic Fans View YouTube channel where you get your Celtic news every morning, first thing in the morning. Right, uh, there's not much happened in the transfer market. We've still got rid of one player, just the one player, and I did Gucci. It uh, looks like Lager Belki will probably end up going to Italy. It all depends if it's going to be a loan deal or if uh, Celtic will take some money for him. And then there's the one and only Benji Segrist. Uh, it looks like he was offered a route out of Celtic, and that seems to have been broke, that have broken down. We'll talk about that in a minute. We need to get to the Bruni, first of all. There's nothing better than Bruni getting one over the Rangers. The Rangers and Celtic games, it's always hard because there's no fans now. So that, that, that's a hard thing. You've got to go away from home. You've got to have, see your fans as well. So... Uh, I think you should maybe get that back because you've got to have that understanding of your fans. The fans want to see you yeah, at Ibrox definitely. as well, scoring and celebrating. and It's part and parcel of the game. I think it all stopped when we kept winning. <laughs> so I think that's maybe why that stopped. Celtic got a strong <laughs> squad. and As you've seen the gap uh, when they played just the other day there, it was quite big. You know, the way Celtic front three press, the way they get after the ball, the quality they've got, I think that's the difference. It is the difference, and you've got to remember the gap is still, as we say, it's eight points. They do have a couple of games in hand, but you know, you've got to win the games at the end of the day. I'd rather have the points on the board, as any football player will, would tell you. Uh, it's good to see that Bruni thinks that, uh, well, we all know the facts, and let's not lie about it. The reduced allocation was due to the fact that Celtic were winning on an ongoing basis. I mean, I've got the pictures, I've got the picture evidence in my phone, and and um on my computer and everything of pictures of being at games back then when we were winning consistently. Pictures myself with Lee Griffiths in, in the stand. It was a fantastic time. And I, and you're right, Scott, they reduced the allocation because we were winning all the time. He was then asked about um, the transfer situation at Celtic uh, to see what he thought might happen this coming, well, the transfer window that we're in. We've only got rid of the one player so far, but let's listen to see what Scott Brown had to say. I'm sure they'll look at another striker. Uh, they'll always want to try and make sure there's competition high up the park and yeah. maybe another winger as well. But no, they, 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 they have got good strength and depth in the squad. They've got a couple of players coming back from injury and uh, Carter Vickers is a huge miss when he doesn't play, obviously. So, uh, But take nothing away. Well, she came in the other day, done really well when he played and a bit of his injury, but so did um, Skills since he's been in the squad. He's done exceptionally well. So it, it's given other people uh, the, op the opportunity to try and get some minutes underneath the belt and to show the manager what they can do. Yeah, that's true. That is true. And it's interesting. That it's, it's, I mean, Scott, he does want to get back into football management. A lot of people have been clambering over the fact that the Celtics should try their utmost to get Scott Brown back at Celtic. Um, and he does want to go his own way. I don't think he would learn too much more from working under Brendan Rodgers uh, after sort of working with him before at Celtic, although he was in the playing staff. you got to remember that at that time, Scott Brown was doing the coaching of the youth setup. And uh, Brendan Rodgers stopped that so that he could concentrate on his football and he had more time to recover. So it'll be interesting to see how Scott's career develops over the next couple of months because he is looking to get back into management and wish him all the best for that. Right, let's get to some Celtic news. I will just double check the top of the table. Yeah, we are still top of the table um, on 54 points and the Rangers are on 46 points. Just a friendly reminder, lads. <laughs> anyway, we move on. Lager Belke. Lager Belke um, at Girona have came in and made a move for... Lager, Belke, Gustav, and, you know, I, I, I still can't believe that we're actually getting rid of him because I thought he, he looked okay early in the season. you got to remember, he was brought in early in the season and he played games when we didn't have a settled back line. He was thrust in uh, with him and Welsh at the time, and not him and Scales, and he did quite well. He did really well at the beginning of the season, but for whatever reason, uh, Brendan Rodgers doesn't seem to fancy him as a player, or maybe he wants him to just go out and get some more game time, due to the fact that uh, his game time will be hindered at Celtic, and we do have too big a squad. Serie A say Girona are targeting Gustav Lagerbelke as a replacement for a centre-half that they are looking to sell to Spurs for about 20 odd million and then they're going to spend under three million on lager belki where does that sound familiar <laughs> where does that sound familiar you'll sell a player for 20 odd million and then you'll go and get a bargain basement player anyway it's not just Celtic to do it. it's clubs all around europe anyway the fact that if they do come in for them the only bad 
a period, if you ask me, it was obviously the one against Firelord. Um, and then I, I don't think he's done too much too wrong. Anyway, it looks like he will be one that will leave Celtic during this transfer window. It'll be interesting to see what develops with that one. And then you've got to look at Celtic have been crying out for a goalkeeper for the last couple of seasons. We did bring in a goalkeeper a few years ago that was uh, quite good when he was at Dundee United, although they did get relegated with Dundee United. And um, he does have one good season with them. We picked him up on a free. The fact that he's now 31 years old, he's hard, first-time football hard to come by at Celtic due to the fact that Ange Postacoglu went out and brought in the one and only Joe Hart just for that little bit of experience in the team. Benjamin Segrist... He had lined up, well, his agent had lined up a move to Stum Graz, but that has collapsed. The Austrians had been looking for, they'd been working on the deal for over a month now, and they had pulled the plug. A loan switch had been agreed with Stum Graz, but they have decided to go another route with the Liverpool goalkeeper to be a live option. Which then suggests if Liverpool are letting one of their goalkeepers go and they're not going to let the other one go that's sitting on the bench. So Celtic will have to look at someone else because there's no chance that a team like Liverpool will let two goalkeepers go within the one season or the one six-month period. Anyway, that's something that we need to think about later on in the summer probably because it doesn't look like Celtic are going to make a move for a goalkeeper unless Benjamin Segrist gets put out during this window. Now that that deal has collapsed and it has been getting worked on for a while. Uh, it looks like he might have to just be here for the rest of the season. He's been at Celtic for a bit of a while now. He's not started one SPFL game, which is uh, bizarre. But turning 32, he really needs to get moved on. And as a player himself, you would want to be playing first-team football. I still think it's completely bizarre that Scott Baines has been at Celtic for so long and, and played number and been number two. Does it say lack of ambition by him as a player? Um, he's happy just picking up his wage at Celtic. He's happy in training every day. But I mean, if you're a prof you're a professional, at anything you want to be out there doing your thing and and showing how good you are on a weekly basis, and he doesn't get to do that, which is a kind of strange situation. But he was, he did get that new contract towards the end of last season and uh, just to make sure that we have that Scottish contingent for European football. Now, like Scott Brown says, Celtic are in the market for another striker due to the fact that O is away on international duty and he'll be missing until at least the middle of February, this time he gets back playing. When you look at it, Celtic have been linked with a Leeds player, a 21-year-old Leeds player. And if I was Leeds, let's face it, we Leeds we turned down 10 million from Leeds in the summer for Matt O'Reilly. Just out of pure spite, you would tell Celtic to go and ram it. I mean, I, I certainly knew, knew that I would, because let's face it, I think getting Matt O'Reilly for 10 million would have been an absolute steal. But the fact that Celtic didn't want to sell the player. Now, Leeds, the striker, is in contract until 2027. So for me, that one's a complete no-go. That one's a complete no-go. There's absolutely no chance of Celtic going out and buying a 21-year-old striker that has such a long contract. It's just not the Celtic way. The Celtic model over the past couple of years, we've never bought anyone that is on a three- or four-year contract. It just doesn't happen because we have to pay too much money for the player. Anyway, on that note, I hope you enjoyed this morning's Celtic news. Uh, I shall see you on any update that there is this afternoon. And on that note, have a fantastic day, Celtic fans all around the world.